No. No. Still doing that little spinny thing. There we go. Finally, I'm live. Okay. What's up, y'all? On Facebook, PDT here, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late coming on. More technical stuff because Facebook was telling me it didn't like my browser and then uh, said it didn't like my camera. So I hope you can hear me. So if you can hear me, those of you that are watching me live, please let me know. If you can't hear me, let me know, but put it in the comments so I can see what's going on. Okay, so I've got an unusual message from the Lord today, but I'm sure I'm going to deliver it. I'm excited about it, but it's not what you're expecting. So let's say a word of prayer and let's dive right on in, because this word is not what you're expecting for Mother's Day. And when you come on the video, please like and share. So please like this video and please share it in as many places as you can, because whenever the Lord, you can hear me, great, thank you. So whenever the Lord releases a prophetic word, we want that to go as many places as possible. So please like and share this video. And again, this prophetic word is not what you're expecting on Mother's Day. So we're going to say a word of prayer, we're going to jump right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking you for your limitless knowledge, your limitless wisdom, your limitless grace, how you just have no end. You just blow my mind on a daily basis and how you always have something new and fresh and, and exciting. You always have a new way to open our eyes and things we haven't seen before and that there is no end to you. And I just thank you for being the true and living God. All other gods are false. You are the true and living God. And I just give you the credit and the glory that's due your name, that there is none beside you and you are the truth. And we just thank you for the opportunity to know you and be a part of your kingdom. For that is truly a blessing. So I ask you to speak through me, breathe through me. Let me say what you want me to say. Let the words come through me that you want to be said, oh God, because this is about you and your glory and your kingdom. So let the Holy Spirit have his way. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen and amen. <clears throat> the prophetic word for today is... When you see me look down, I'm looking at my phone because I'm on Periscope on my phone. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Periscope all at the same time. The prophetic word for today is healing on Mother's Day. Healing on Mother's Day. We're going to look at quite a few scriptures. Healing. That's right. I said healing. Healing on Mother's Day. We're going to look at quite a few scriptures. We're going to start with a very familiar scripture, especially for this day. We're going to start with Proverbs 31. Now, a little background on Proverbs 31. I don't know how many of you have studied it. Proverbs 31 starts out by saying the sayings of King Lemuel, or Lemuel, however you say that, uh, uh, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. So first of all, this word, uh, when you see it in English, the Proverbs 31 thing is a prophecy, and when you read it in Hebrew, it's a poem. Also, there is no historical record of there ever having been a King Lemuel or a King Lemuel. Some people think that this is Solomon writing under a pseudonym. All scholars don't agree, but some scholars think that King Lemuel is Solomon writing under a pseudonym, which a lot of authors do. Okay, if that's the case, then the woman that taught Solomon these sayings was Bathsheba. Because Bathsheba, yes, that Bathsheba uh, that David had an affair with and killed her husband, that's Solomon's mom. So it's entirely possible that it's Bathsheba, the queen mother, that taught this to Solomon. Entirely possible. But if not, so far, at least in what I've researched, scholars don't can't find a King Lemuel, but we do know that Proverbs 31 was taught to him by his mom. So just a little background on it. We're going to start at verse 18. We're going to read four or five verses. Uh, I'm reading out of the New International Version. A wife of noble character who can find, ver, I'm sorry, verse 10, that's verse 10, I'm sorry, Proverbs 31, 10. A wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence, her, confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. 
She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. I'm going to stop right there. That was 10 through 15. I stopped by to tell you that it's entirely possible that you may not have had that experience with your mom. Most of the time on Mother's Day, we, we want to address the group or the situations where everybody had a good mom or a good childhood, and that may not be the case. So if you had a good mom and your mother is still with you, love her, honor her, tell her how much she means to you. If you had a good mom and mama's dead, then every Mother's Day is hard. Because if you had a good mother, there's no substitute for a good mother. You will never find anyone in this life that loves you like your mother did if you had a good mom. But some of you listening to me right now, that's not what happened in your life. Some of you never knew your mother. Some of you, your mother gave you up when she was very, very young. Sometimes she may have given you up because she wanted you to have a better life than she could have given you. Sometimes uh, your mother may have given you up because she didn't want you. Sometimes you may have been raised with your biological mom or mother figure, but she abused you. She was not good to you at all. I stopped by to tell you that it's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling, that you have permission to feel on Mother's Day. Because I've been in churches and I've been in situations where some people on Mother's Day feel entirely left out because, because they didn't have a Proverbs 31 mother. They didn't have that experience. And I stopped by to tell you, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. So you have permission on this Mother's Day, whatever you feel, to feel what you're feeling. You don't have to put that plastic, fake Christian smile on your face. You can feel whatever you're feeling, okay? You might be enjoying an afternoon out with your mother. Your mother might be in the ground. Uh, speaking my, for myself personally, I had two moms. I had my biological mother that gave birth to me, but she did not raise me. My aunt raised me, okay? You may be in a situation where you never knew your mom and you've been searching all your life for her or you might not care to know her or maybe she didn't care to know you or maybe your mother was abusive. Maybe you didn't get that Proverbs 31 experience. So the first point the Holy Spirit wanted me to make was that it's okay to feel what you're feeling on this Mother's Day. It's okay to feel what you're feeling. You don't have to fake your way through this day. Okay? Some of you have, may even have had an experience like Jacob did with his kids, except you, it happened with your mom. Mama played favorites. If you're the favorite in your family, you've been getting favored your whole life, and you probably like it, and you probably throw it in your siblings' faces. If you're not the favorite, you've probably been upset your whole life, and you don't understand. Why don't, why don't they love me like they love them? Why don't they talk to me like they talk to them? Why don't they pay attention to me like they pay attention to them? Why don't they say nice things to me? Why don't you give me some of that kindness? Why don't you notice me? Why don't you say nice things to me? I've accomplished things in life. I can do good things. Why don't you have any compliments for me? That might be the cry of your heart right now. So I stop by to tell you that you've got permission to feel whatever it is you're feeling on this Mother's Day. That's point number one. Okay? Point number two is based on Romans 8 and 1. There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, or who walk not in the flesh, but in the spirit. I stop by to tell you that point number two is that you can get rid of your guilt. You can get rid of your guilt because that's why the Lord went through that brutal arrest. The Lord wasn't just arrested. He was brutally arrested. And the Lord wasn't just beaten. He was brutally beaten. And it was done in public. And the Lord wasn't just crucified. He was brutally crucified. And part of the benefit of being a Christian is that the Lord allowed all that to happen to him so that he could take the punishment for guilt. The punishment of guilt for sin. So I stopped by to tell you that point number two is that you can release your guilt today. Because we live in a culture and we live in a time where many times people don't really say anything about mama. And that just amazes me because you will dog your father out without hesitation. You will kick your father in his groin literally, socially, emotionally, on social media. 
for some reason, this culture doesn't have any problem bashing men. And if your father wasn't any good, you talk about him like a dog. You talk about him, you spit right in his face. And every time you sign your check, you sign in his name. But you don't have any problem telling your dad off if your father dropped the ball. But if it was your mom, we live in a culture that says, oh, no, no, that's not okay. Well, I stopped by to tell you, I'm not talking about if you had a good experience. If you did not have a good experience, or sometimes your mother grows into who she's going to be. And I'm also speaking to you women that are mothers now. Do not feel guilty if you are not the full Proverbs 31 woman right now. So let's say you became a mother very young, or let's say you're still very young. You know, you might not be the full Proverbs 31 mama right now. You've got to grow into that. So my point, point number two is you can put your guilt on the cross of Christ. It's already been buried and put in the ground. You don't have to feel guilty. And if mama didn't do everything she was supposed to do, or maybe she wasn't the best person, I stopped by to tell you, the Lord wants you to stop feeling guilty about how you feel. Stop feeling guilty about how you feel. If your mother wasn't the best person, or if you are a mom, and you're not everything that you're going to be, stop feeling guilty. Stop feeling guilty on this Mother's Day. You don't have to carry that guilt because Christ brutally suffered. He didn't just suffer, he brutally suffered to take that guilt from you. So number one, you've got permission to feel what you're feeling. Number two, you can release your guilt. But under that, that's two way. Two B under point number two is how how do we release our guilt? The key, the key, the trick is doing it mentally and emotionally. I stopped by to tell you that if you're still carrying something from your childhood, do you know why you're still carrying it? Because you rehearse it. <laughs> every time you open your mouth, every time you think about it, you're talking about, well, this happened, well, that happened. Well, I remember when mama said this, and you know, I was going to go to school over here, but mama and them didn't like it. And, blah, blah, blah. and every time you open your mouth, you're rehearsing the past. I stopped by to tell you, you can't do anything about your past. Did you know that? Whatever your past is, is written. All of us, no exceptions. You can't do anything about that which is and that which has happened. Okay? But what you need to change to accept Christ's offer of guilt-free living is you've got to change your confession. You've got to stop rehearsing. Stop rehearsing in your mind and with your mouth that which was if you don't do that you know what you're going to do you're going to you're going to you're going to spew that out on your kids i know a lot of us don't like it i know a lot of us don't agree i know a lot of us think that's not fair but uh you have to learn how to turn the judgment over to god i know you don't like that i know you want vengeance i know you want strike back i know you want to make the people hurt that hurt you but God said in his word that vengeance is his. So one thing you don't want to do in life is get over into the Lord's business. God has given us plenty of business. There's plenty of business you got as a human. But what you don't want to do is get over into the Lord's business because then you're going to get rebuked. God going to put you in check. And if God says that vengeance is mine, that means you need to turn the vengeance over to God. I know you don't want to. But that's the thing to do. And once you turn the vengeance over to God, you will feel a weight lift off of you. You will not realize how much you've been carrying because of that desire for vengeance that you've been holding on to, sometimes for decades. And so you need to turn that vengeance over to the Lord. See, I don't know who I'm talking to, but that's for somebody. And when you let go of that desire for vengeance, you're going to feel something break off of you like you've never felt before. You're going to feel a freedom that you never felt before. You need to turn that vengeance over to God. I know that's for somebody, and I know that's right. Okay? And so once you do that, and you turn the vengeance over to God, then you need to change the tape, the CD, the YouTube video that's playing in your head, and stop rehearsing what happened. Okay? But the only way to stop rehearsing the old is to embrace the new. So the Lord told me to give you this scripture. This scripture is one of my favorite scriptures. It's Psalm 27 and 10. Psalm 27, 10. I'm going to read a couple of different translations. New, Inter New International Version, Version says, Though my father and my mother forsake me, 
the Lord will receive you. Good God Almighty, I know that's right. New Living Translation, even if my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. English Standard Version, for my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. New King James Version, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Good God Almighty, I know what I'm talking about. So what you have to do is you have to let go of rehearsing the old and put Psalm 2710 in your mouth and put it in your head. I probably need to make a song about it so you can meditate on it. Because sometimes it's good to watch a video where the scripture is coming up on the screen. It forces your mind to meditate on the, the actual verse. You need to start saying that though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord. See, because what God will do is God will get you, it will teach you how to know his love. He will teach you that his love is higher than human love. His love is like there's actually no comparison. There's nothing to compare God's love to. It's truly unconditional. He's, he's truly everything the scripture says. He's patient. He's kind. He doesn't keep a record of wrongs done. He wants what's best for you. He's gentle. He believes in you. He hopes all things for you. He's eternally positive and optimistic. God is just wonderful beyond words. And if you didn't get the love that you needed from mama and you feel like your life hasn't reached its potential because you let mama and them hang you up. Because I stopped by to tell you, some mothers, that's why I try to tell you, you can be released from your guilt today. Some mothers have, not all, have manipulated and controlled you to the point where you haven't been living your dream. Because your dream involved you going to a different school or moving away or maybe marrying somebody or that they didn't approve of and you shut your dream down because of mama and them. I stopped by to tell you, God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That includes your mother. So I know a lot of people are going to think that what I'm saying is sacrilege and blasphemy. I don't care. Be upset. I'm a prophet of God. I'm going to say what the Lord tell me to say. And if you don't like it, then be upset. How about that? So you do not exalt humans above God. That is idolatry. That includes your mama and that includes your children. If you're a parent, your children were born sinners. And they ain't no different from nobody else. You love them and you don't love them more than God loves them, but they still got issues that must be dealt with. The same thing is true with your parents. You do not exalt your parents above God. God is the perfect one. God is the holy one. God is the sinless one. Everybody else is clay and breath. So that's why you can let go of your guilt. And that's why if you have been, haven't been living up to your potential, because you know mom and them ain't going to like it, I stopped by to tell you today that you can be free. Oh, see, I feel it when I say it. I feel it when I say it. That's how I know it's the Holy Ghost breathing through me. I feel it when I say it. You can be free. You can be free. You can be free right now. You don't have to live one more day in your life in jail with somebody else's plan. You can discover the love of God and let him tell you his plan, because I stopped by to tell you, his plan is better. His plan uh, results in the highest version of you. His plan results in the most possible joy. His plan results in your highest development. So in other words, why would you not want that plan? Why would you want to stay in jail to a hurt and smaller version of yourself when you can come alive through Christ to a healed, maximized version of yourself? Why would you not want that? That's what God is offering. That's what God is offering on this Mother's Day. Okay? All right. So uh, I'm going to move on because i got a few more points to make. So point number one is that it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Point number two and all the sub points was you don't have to walk in guilt. Not one more day. Not one more day. Here come point number three. Point number three is we're going to look at the death of Sarah. The death of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 23. Okay, Genesis, first book in the Bible chapter 23, and we're looking at the death of Sarah, Abraham's wife, Isaac's mom. Genesis 23 and 1 says, I'm reading out of the NIV, Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, 
And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am a foreigner and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site here so I can bury my dead. Okay, so point number three is in uh, verse 23. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. That's a long time to be with somebody. That's a long time. Abraham and Sarah were together for a long time. Okay, Sarah was 127 when she died. That's a long time. You may have had your mother a long time. But here comes point number one, uh, excuse me, point number three. She died at Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. So point number three is you need to have a season or a period of time of mourning and weeping. Because some of y'all have been holding it inside. You've been carrying it. I'll, t I'll get personal with you. I'll give you my personal experience. Both of my biological parents. I stood over their dead bodies right after they died. And when my mother died, it was me and my sisters, and she was on a concrete slab in the morgue in the hospital. And we kind of said our goodbyes, but I said my goodbyes to my mother when she was still alive. But she was still conscious a few days before, and me and my sister were there, and then she died a few days after we saw her. And then the last time I saw her was on that concrete slab. And we said prayer, each one of us, we had prayer and confessions, and I let her go. I said what I had to say. And, and we mourned over our mother. And so point number three is that it's okay to mourn and weep. You're supposed to mourn and weep. But some of y'all, once again, see this is secret stuff. This is secret stuff. Some of y'all are mourning and weeping over lost potential. What do I mean by that? I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. Some of y'all have realized much later in the game that you stayed mad for too long. I stopped by to tell you, you need to try to reconcile with your parents if they're still alive, if you can. Now, if your parents are crazy and abusive, then you can't reconcile with that. There's nothing you can do with that. You're going to have to let that go. But if there's any chance to reconcile with your parents, some of y'all have realized you stayed mad too long. You ain't supposed to be mad for no 10 and 20 and 30 years. That starts to eat away at your body and it sends you to your grave too early. You ain't supposed to be mad for no decade. Some of y'all have realized you wasted a lot of years in your life because, again, you kept rehearsing what they did. Instead of talking about what God can do and what you could do, you kept talking about what happened to you. And the day has come when you realize you wasted a lot of years with that. But whatever it is that you're mourning, it's okay to mourn. I stopped by to tell you, you have permission to mourn and weep over your mom regardless of what the situation was. It's okay to mourn and weep. Okay, wait, did my video just go off? Uh, let me know in the comments if my video just went off. I can't see if it's still going on. I hope it's still going, because uh, I'm almost done. Uh, but Facebook gave me a message that said, sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. So I uh, hope it's still going. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna have to pull up. I'm gonna have to know what? No, is it still going or or it's gone? I'm good. Okay. All right. So you can still hear me. Okay, great. All right, because I can't see it on my end. Something dropped on my end. Okay. Glad you can uh, still see me. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, so it's okay to mourn. That's point number three. Okay. Here come point number four, Genesis 23, 3. Then Abraham arose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. Point number four is get up from the dead. Lord have mercy. Get up from the dead. Get up from the dead. Whatever has happened, if your mother is physically dead or your childhood is your childhood, whatever happened, happened, or if there's wasted potential, whatever's going on, after you have your period of mourning, Abraham got up. Get up from your dead. Get up from your dead. I know y'all were together for a long time. I know it was deeply emotional. I know a lot of things happened. Remember, the scripture just told us Sarah lived to be 127 years old. That's a long time. Abraham and Sarah were together for a long time. They had a lot of memories. They went through a lot. But Abraham got up from his dead wife. The Bible just told you he rose from beside his dead wife. Get up from the dead. 
Okay. All right. On to the next point. Uh, I believe that was four. Uh, the next point is he said he said in verse four, "I'm a foreigner and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site, uh, so here I can bury my dead." And there is the final point I'm going to make here: is that you need to bury it. You need to bury it. You need to put it in the ground. Every time you keep confessing it, every time you keep thinking about it, every time you keep reliving it, you're resurrecting it. And that's why the Lord went through that brutal experience so you could take whatever happened and bury it once for all. That's why the Lord didn't have to die twice. He didn't have to die again because it's buried once and for all. So you can take that experience and you can bury it once or mourn for it. It's okay to weep and mourn. And then it's okay to get up from that which is dead, and then it's okay to bury that which is dead. Because here's why. Because what God wants to do is he wants to burst you out into new life. What happens in the spring, the time we're in now? I know we're going through the pandemic, so it's not a normal spring, but what happens in the spring? Flowers spring forth, they burst forth. New life comes from the, from the earth. That's what God wants to do in your life. If you're listening to me right now, and anything I've said, has applied to you. God wants to burst forth new life from you. What does that mean in practical sense? It means healing you from old scars and old wounds. It means helping you to go back to school. It means getting you in a new living space because you do know you have to decorate your living space to look like you. Every day you wake up psychologically, that will put you in a good frame when the space you live in looks like it's supposed to look like, okay? It means maybe bringing a new relationship in your life. It means uh, maybe uh, you picking up a dream that you put down when you were a child. Uh, for example, one of the things that a lot of people do is they give up their instrument. Uh, when I was teaching private piano, I, I tried to tell my younger students, don't stop playing an instrument. Because most people give up their instrument around 12 or 13, okay? And every single adult student I ever had that was coming back to the piano said they were sorry that they gave up their instrument. So I try to tell kids when they sit in junior high school, don't give up the instrument. But people get interested in relationships and other things, and some people think it's not cool. And just, you know, life happens. But I never had an adult student that didn't regret giving up their instrument. And most people do it in junior high school. So maybe God wants you to go back and pick up that clarinet, pick up that tuba, pick up that viola, Pick up that cello, okay? And it will it will be a breath of fresh air to you like you've never seen before. For some of y'all listening to me now, Holy Spirit just told me, for some of y'all listening to me now, it's going to be new relationships. It's going to be some new people coming in your life, listen to me carefully, that speak to the best in you. Do you understand that you have to have at least one person in your life? God, yes, but I'm talking about among us humans. you got to have at least one person in your life that sees and speaks to the best in you. Did you know that? Somebody that sees your potential. Somebody that sees what you can be. Somebody that's always focusing on what you do right. Somebody that's always challenging you in a loving way to reach higher, to be more, that there's more in you. Did you know that? For some of y'all looking at me and listening to me right now, and even though some of you that will be watching the replay, God wants to bring somebody in your life that starts speaking to that part of you. Because for some of us, that's brand new. <laughs> if you had a good mother, if you had a good father, if you still have them, if they loved you, they still, still speak well of you and to you. But if you didn't, it might be a new experience. It might be the first time in your days, I don't care how old you are, where someone comes in your life and they see your potential and they speak to it. And, and, and they talk about the good things that you've done and, and, and they reward you for the stuff you've done right. And they open your eyes to what can be because you may have been thinking apartment and God may have been thinking apartment building. And you may have been thinking small business and God may have been thinking global international conglomerate. And you may have been thinking two or three people and God may have been thinking worldwide platform. And you, have, and you may have been thinking $100, 
and God may have been thinking a hundred thousand dollars a hundred million dollars what would you do if God gave you that kind of money do you know the mistake that that it's the same mistake do you know the mistake that people make they never change their thinking your money is always going to come down to wherever it is that you think so I don't care how much money you make if you think thirty thousand dollars if God gave you a hundred thousand dollars you're gonna bring it down to that 30 that does not fail you need somebody to come in your life that thinks on a hundred thousand dollar level and they're gonna turn your thoughts up to that it's a completely different thing you need somebody to come in your life that thinks on a multi-million dollar level they're gonna turn your thoughts up do a completely different thing and it will it will absolutely blow your mind to find somebody challenging you to do more to reach more to reach higher you need that because we all need that we all need that we all need that do you know how I know that do you know how I know that for a fact here's how I know because when the Lord went in the house and I'm done after this when the Lord went in the house of the scribes and the Pharisees there was a woman there that took a very expensive uh, box of ointment and poured it over him and she washed his feet with her tears and she dried them with her hair the religious people around Jesus said to the Lord if you knew what kind of woman that was you wouldn't be let her you wouldn't be letting her touch you like that and this is what the Lord said the Lord said well since I came in the house y'all didn't give me no kiss you didn't give me no hug Jesus Christ said that you know what that tells me that tells me that the Lord appreciates affection if God in the flesh appreciates affection how much more those of us that are just human how much more do we need affection that's what I'm trying to say so that's why I started off by telling you it's okay to feel what you're feeling it's okay to get rid of your guilt it's okay to mourn your dead then you've got to get up from your dead okay then you can bury your dead and you can burst forth to new life it's okay it's okay to say I need a hug it's okay to say I need a shoulder to cry on it's okay to say I need somebody to believe in me I'm tired of people laughing at me when I say this it just looks like everybody laugh forget that later for that you need somebody that says I'm with that I believe in that we gonna make that happen it will change your life okay so that's what I start by to tell you I told you it's an unusual word this Mother's Day but the Spirit of God gave it to me and I'm gonna release what I tell you every week if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing I ain't saying nothing but whatever he tell me to say I'm gonna say what the Lord told me to say so I know that's an unusual word but it's a word for somebody and I believe it's a word for many people so again like and share this video okay so that those that because remember whenever holidays come around man everybody's not having the same experience there's all these different groups and I wanted to be sure and God wanted to be sure to speak to everybody on Mother's Day whatever your situation is God has a word for you where you are in life okay because you need somebody that last thing I said you need somebody to turn it up you need somebody to say that's good but you can do more you need somebody to say yeah that's good but have you thought about this you need somebody to say you got this kind of money this is how to think on that level this is how to think on a six-figure level this is how to think on a seven-figure level this is what people with that kind of money do you need somebody to turn it up okay all right amen and amen that's a prophetic word for the day I'm excited about that word I'm receiving that word as I'm saying it for myself because the gospel is always to me first now uh, when you see me close my eyes I'm praying in tongues and I'm asking the Holy Ghost if there's any other words he, prophetic words financial words healing words or words of deliverance he wants me to release so here I go okay I got an image uh, sometimes a prophetic flows through an image the image I got was of a green tree but it was a strong tree like an oak tree very strong tree with branches so what that means is that it does not just mean new life because green you know uh, is plant life newness money growth it doesn't just mean that it means stability it means a thick trunk 
it means roots. It means being able to reach down into the ground like trees do and be stable and be thick and be secure and be fruitful at the same time. So what that means when you get an image like that prophetically, for those of you don't, those of you that don't know, what that means is that God is offering that to you. He's saying that that is possible. But many prophetic words. Now, if the Lord gives a prophetic word and says this is going to happen, that's not conditional. It's going to happen. Write it down. It's going to come to pass. But when the Lord gives images and sounds and stuff like that, that means it can happen. So I stopped by to tell you, those of you that are watching and listening to me, God is reaching out his hand telling you, you can be thick like an oak tree. You can be stable. You can have roots in the ground and you can bear fruit. You can be green. You can be prosperous. You can be alive. That's what that means. That means you have an opportunity right now. So for those of you that aren't saved, I want to invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you do that by ABC. A, admit that you are a sinner. B, believe he is the Son of God. He died on the cross for your sins. Rose again the third day. C, confess that with your mouth while you believe it in your heart. If you do that, you will become born again. You will get saved. For those of you that are already Christians, I stop by to tell you, don't just accept Jesus as your Savior. Accept him as your Lord. And the way you do that is by HBO. H, hear the word of God like you've been doing now. B, believe, believe that what God says is true and in your best interest. And O, obey. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. That's how you get blessed off of the conditional prophetic word. It's not enough just to hear it. The children of Israel heard the prophetic word and they still didn't make it to the promised land. You have to HBO. You have to hear, believe, and obey. So that means God is offering that kind of blessing I'm receiving it. I'm taking it. I'm going to do everything that the Holy Spirit just revealed. I'm receiving that word because I tell you all the time, there's nothing I'm saying to you that I'm not doing myself. So I'm receiving that word. I'm going to let myself feel what I'm feeling. I'm going to get rid of my guilt. I'm going to mourn for anything I need to mourn to. I'm going to get up from my dead. I'm going to bury my dead. And I'm going to embrace the new life. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. Don't forget that my quarter two prophetic devotional is out. Uh, so get your copy today. It's on my website, uh, prophetdavidtaylor.org. I'm on every Sunday at this time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll be on um, for uh, uh, No More Genies on second Thursday night, May 14th. It's the second Thursday of every month, 7 o'clock p.m. I'll be on for my No More Genies series. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Don't forget, on New Music Friday, I'm releasing new music, and I'm working on, uh, I just released a track about marriage. And I did a little teaching on marriage, so check out my YouTube channel, Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. And I'm going to be releasing an a EP and some videos again soon. So, got a lot going on, but again, I'm trying to be that tree, okay? I'm not saying anything that I'm not doing. So when I challenge you to be as fruitful as possible, I'm doing that. I'm not just that. I'm not just jabber John. <laughs> I'm doing it, okay? All right, by the grace of God, I'm not giving myself any glory. I'm giving him all the glory. But I'm saying I'm putting some works behind my faith. I'm obeying. I'm not just there. just right here, okay? All right, so God bless you. Thanks to those of you that watch me live. And uh, thanks to those of you that are watching the replay. God bless you. Let this word sink in your heart, and it will produce a change. And again, remember to share it with as many people as you can. Happy Mother's Day if your mother's alive and y'all are in good fellowship and you can talk to her, call her, write her. You know, if you guys are together, great, hug her. If not, call her, write her, email or whatever. Just let her know how much you appreciate her. And just let her know you appreciate what she has done right. Just count your blessings and make a list of the things that Ma did right and tell her. And the entire day will be blessed. Okay? All right, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you this Thursday, 7 p.m. for No More Genies, Friday at noon for New Music Friday, and again next Sunday for uh, Weekly Live Prophetic Word. All right, amen, amen, and God bless. Have a great day and week.